everybody, and welcome to the USA Today Network's live stream show of the historic SpaceX launch of two astronauts, two NASA astronauts, to space in only a few hours. I'm Florida Today space reporter Rachel Joy. And I'm Antonia Jaramillo, and we are inside the Florida Today Blockhouse. Inside, mind you, we were going to be outside, but weather has been a bit fickle today. Yes, it's been really... Um, a disaster, actually. I'd, I'd actually, I think we have a, a full-blown disaster on our hands. It was so bad. I mean, our tent broke. Our tent broke. It, it flew away. Um, and so we just suddenly scurried down here. We're inside the block house, so we're sorry if it doesn't look quite as beautiful. We really wanted to show you an amazing shot of the VAB, the iconic vehicle assembly building at NASA. But that's yeah. just not going to happen today. Not today. No. No. But we are here on site at Kennedy Space Center, which is pretty cool. Um, it was actually very restricted media-wise how much media could be here because of the coronavirus issues. Yeah, so we're still very lucky to be able to yes. be here. And, um, you know, we are here because this is a very historic launch. Yeah, I mean, this is the biggest launch you and I have covered. For sure. Especially since working here at Florida today. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this is... And this is SpaceX's biggest launch to date. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So let's talk about all the reasons why this is such a historic launch. Okay. Number one, uh, we have got, oh, we've got a well, question number already. one, is, is the, the launch, launch scrub? scrub? Not yet. No. Not yet. We are, we're, we've had tornado warnings, but the launch is not scrub. Yeah. Which your hair looks pretty good, by the way, considering oh, what you. we've been through. Thank I mean, you. I think. You look great too, Chica. <laughs> no, seriously. Not bad. We've been rained on like, I don't know, three times. Oh my God, everything has been, been rained on. I don't know how they're going to do this, um, uh, you know, launching a rocket in this kind of weather, but it's happening. We are not scrubbed yet. Um, weather is definitely a huge, huge factor in today's story. Um, you've actually interviewed folks at the 45th Space Wing who are the, the guys that monitor the weather. They're the ones giving all that information to SpaceX and NASA. What, what do you think we're looking at in terms of all the issues? So, I mean, what they've said, the main, like, weather concern is, which right now, um, the forecast today was 50% go. And as we've seen, it really kind of has been 50% go. It really is. Sometimes it's sunny and it's clear and there's no wind. And sometimes then it's raining a lot and we get tornado warnings. So it's, like, really a toss of a coin. But, yes, like you mentioned, I interviewed, I went down to uh, interview the people who work for the Weather squad Squadron at the 45th Space Wing. And, basically, they you know, do the forecast and everything for launch day, but then depending on each launch, on how heavy the rocket is, what they're sending up, what kind of vehicle it is, that also then all accounts into whether or not that rocket can fly. So it really goes down to the last second. Now, what our SpaceX official Hans Koningsman, which I'm not even sure if I'm pronouncing that I think last that's pretty name. good. Thank yeah. you. Uh, what he said during the pre-launch briefing two days ago now, was they're not going to wait until the last possible minute, until like T minus one minute to see if they're going to go, because we are, we're launching humans this time. Exactly. So I think, so the last possible minute, he said, was at T minus 45 minutes, right before they begin fueling the rocket. Um, Which is about four o'clock. Yes. Yeah. Well, I would Ish. say, yeah, or like 3.45. Yeah. Um, so basically, we're, we're following this launch until that point. Yeah, I mean, at noon, they were going to decide if they were going to proceed or not, and they decided to. So we are still on track to launch. The astronauts are now at the pad. They're on the rocket, right? They're they in are. the capsule. Yeah. And, um, and we're hoping for a nice, beautiful launch, one that we can also see. I know. Well, we can run outside when it happens, maybe if it's not raining then. I mean, yeah, but I'm just hoping in terms of clouds not covering it. Oh, in. that's true. Yeah. So... Um, let's talk about how historic this launch is. There's many, many factors that make this a historic launch. Number one, this is the first flight of humans from America, from Kennedy Space Center since 2011. That's when the shuttle retired. So we haven't sent anybody from American soil in nine years, almost a decade. I know. I have never seen a human launch. That's so crazy. I know. I know. Like, that's what I'm telling you. I mean, folks, we've seen a lot of satellites over the past nine years. And science experiments and, and spacecraft. We saw, we launched, you know, Solar Orbiter was most recent. Solar Orbiter, yep. We get the science stuff up there. We get the satellites. But, it's but yeah, a we've lot seen of, a lot of satellites. A lot of satellites. No humans. No humans. So this is pretty exciting stuff. I mean, actually, Tony and I, 
just now, or, oh, I don't know, what was that half hour ago, ran outside yeah. and the astronauts drove by in and the Tesla. And they were waving at us. I know. I know. We already said we're going to cry when this um, on yeah, happens. I'm pretty sure that's going to happen. Yeah. This is real, folks. These are real people, Bob Benkin, Doug Hurley, that we are sending up into space today. Haven't done it in nine years. It is so exciting. It is so thrilling. So that's one of the big number one historic reasons. Yeah, that's right. The most. That's the key thing that everyone's rem remembering. Yeah. But there's still so many other firsts yeah. that are also happening. Like what? I mean, this is going to be the first time that humans launch on an entirely new spacecraft since 1981 with the debut of the space shuttle. That's right. That was tomorrow. Next year, that will be what? 30, 40 years. That'll be, 30, I, I, that'll be 40 that, years. But, yeah. yeah, 1981 to 2021, that's 40, it's been 39 years since humans launched on an entirely new vehicle. And that's really what makes these guys test pilots, right? I mean, yeah. in their eyes, they are test pilots. They are taking this aircraft in their minds, a spacecraft, um, up for the very first time. It is untested. Humans have never flown on this rocket, and humans have never flown on this capsule. All of it, untested for humans. So it's really yeah. anything can happen. And before they were astronauts, they were military test That's pilots. What I'm saying. I mean, this is like the dream come true. In fact, what they have said throughout all their interviews and everything is just how they never could have imagined this, but it's just such a dream come true to now get to live this moment. I mean, their wives who are also astronauts must be so jealous of them at the same time. I mean, everyone must be so jealous. Yeah. Well, every astronaut. I don't know about every human. I'm not jealous. I mean, I don't want to do it. I don't know if I want to be the first one on a new vehicle, but I do want to be on a spacecraft and go to space. Okay. Yeah. Well, maybe USA Today can get you, know, get you a seat. Hey, hey, here's looking out. Yeah, I think so. So so that's number two. Um, I think another thing about this launch that is very different and exciting and historic is that President Trump is going to be here to watch this launch. Yeah, and the vice president. And the vice president. It never happened before. President Trump's never been here. Yeah, launch. he has never been here for a launch. The vice president has. Uh, he actually came here end of 2018, but then that launch got scrubbed. There was another SpaceX launch, but it scrubbed at the last minute, and so he had to go back to D.C. and couldn't watch it lift off. Kind of mm -hmm. a bummer for him. Total bummer. Dude, what if he's bad luck? And then they're coming down here, and it scrubs today. Okay, let's not think about that. I don't want to call the VP bad luck. It's all good luck here. I feel like I'm looking at this like a wedding. You know how they say that if it rains on a wedding that it's like good luck? Do they say that? I thought. Yeah, that. no, they say if it rains at your wedding, it's good luck. Okay. So it's been raining, and I think that's good luck. Good luck. We have a question oh. from Eileen. How long is the launch window? So it's actually an instantaneous launch window. Since this spacecraft is launching and heading to the International Space Station, they need a launch at the exact time at 4.33 p.m. And actually, um, our other colleague, our other space reporter, Emery Kelly, who's behind me, you can't really see him. Um, oh, there he is. Oh, I just blocked him. Say hi again, Emery. There you go. Oh, there, oh, there he is. I yeah. think he said the exact liftoff time was 4.33 p.m. and 35 seconds. Is that correct? Correct. Correct. So they need a launch exactly at that time or they are not flying today. And the whole point is because the International Space Station, that's another whole spaceship that's also zooming past Earth at thousands of miles per hour. So they need to be able to dock at the precise moment. Absolutely. Why don't we talk a little bit? What are you laughing about? I just thought that it was like a funny answer. Like, oh. absolutely. Okay. So let's talk about the mission a little bit. I mean, this is, I mean, more than just a, a, a test flight. I mean, that is super, super cool. And humans are going to the International Space Station today. Also, the first time we fly on a commercial spacecraft. Oh, we forgot about that. Yeah. Pretty important. That's another big one. <laughs> I mean, we've only been on NASA, on government spacecraft. NASA. That's right. Russia. China. So this is a part of NASA's commercial crew program. Basically, NASA doesn't want to own rockets anymore. I mean, maybe a couple here and there, that big old SLS in yeah, Orion. The moon, but. Yeah, but basically, they want other people, other companies to be making those rockets, sending folks, and NASA wants to be a customer, they like to call themselves. So um, this is the first time ever that a private company, SpaceX, is the company responsible for sending NASA astronauts to space. That is just such a massive big deal. It's never happened in the history of all of NASA. NASA has always considered the flying of astronauts to space uh, sacred. I mean, it, it is the DNA of what they do. Yeah. So the fact that they're not doing it is just mind-blowing. And I think it also then has to show 
kind of the trust that NASA has to have in SpaceX. I mean, to absolutely be just a partner as opposed to the one being full on taking the lead. Um, but it's also kind of great that it's in SpaceX that are being the first commercial partners to send astronauts because their whole goal is to colonize Mars and to send humans to Mars. And so, I mean, yeah, they should be the, maybe the first commercial company to send humans to space. Absolutely. So, yeah. Elon Musk's goal has always been Mars. That's what he talks about. Mars, 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 multiplanetary species. To him, this is one leg on that journey. You know, sure. in order to get people to Mars, he's got to prove that he can build a rocket. He's got to prove he can send cargo to space. He's got to prove he can send humans to space. He's got to prove that he can orbit. He's got to, you know, prove all of these steps all leading up to Mars. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so, and this is, this is, I guess what that first big step. Well, to get there. I, yeah, I think sending cargo to ISS was a big step. This is. I think maybe sending cargo to ISS was a very big step for this launch, but yeah. maybe for like the grand scheme of things. Yeah. I feel like the one that first sends humans, like that's going to be the one that everyone remembers. People aren't going to remember that in 2012 we sent the first cargo dragon spacecraft to the International Space Station. Probably not. I I actually forgot myself. <laughs> <laughs> no. You're right. We're going to remember this day. Mm -hmm. We're going to remember May 27, 2020. 2020. I was almost going to say 2019. I was like, you got the year wrong, Chico. Wow. I'm still stuck in the last year. It's happening. It's 2020, and we are sending astronauts to the International Space Station from American soil for the first time in and nine years. We forgot another thing. And during a pandemic, <gasps> we have never launched humans during a pandemic. I mean, the last big pandemic was the Spanish flu in 1920, and we weren't sent, we weren't launching any rockets then. We weren't. That was we were barely flying planes. Exactly. Who? Yeah. Nope. I mean, oh my! I just can't. I can't, wrap, your head I can't wrap my head around this. You know. <laughs> oh, Rob's going back to the weather. How does it look? Well, it looks. It looks like once this cell cell that's about to go over you guys passes, we're going to be good. But oh, really? You know. That's good to hear. Emery, what are you hearing from the NASA feed? Are they still saying all go for launch? Any live updates? Anything cool? Still going. All right, we're still going, you guys. That's good to hear. Have we mentioned, have we talked a little bit about who these astronauts were? No, but before we get to that, let's talk about the, the mission itself. Oh, let's, yeah, let's we talk about, that. yeah, I mean, so. There's so many firsts. So we just got through all the firsts, and maybe we'll do that again later. But Probably. <laughs> right now, those are all the firsts. So this mission is called Demo 2. Why is that? Because there was a Demo 1, Demo standing for demonstration. Yeah. And basically, SpaceX demonstrated that they could send a, the Crew Dragon. Which is the spacecraft that the astronauts are going to be on today when they launch to space. And so now this is demo two, in which the actual humans are in it, and they're going to, again, the International Space Station. But what it's are, still a test flight. Yes. It's still a test mission. The real, real mission with Crew Dragon will be then the one with other astronauts later on. Yep. So what else are they doing? What, what are all the milestones? What are the missions in a part of this? this? Um, so I, would, I mean, launching successfully. Yep. You know? Uh, and then... So it's a whole 19-hour trip to the International Space Station. And the whole reason that SpaceX also decided that and NASA decided that is because they want the astronauts to perform several tasks among Crew Dragon, including sleeping on Dragon, you know, for the first time, so that they can certify this vehicle for flight. Uh, so that's a really big thing, you know. Actually, the Russian Soyuz capsule, that only takes six hours to head to the International Space Station. Granted, that only happened in the past few years that they went down to six hours before it was a much longer flight. But uh, the whole point for this one, aside from the orbital mechanics and just choosing the right appropriate weather date and all that jazz, is also because since this is a test mission, they want to make sure that the astronauts can do everything they have to do on Dragon in the a right amount of time while also not extending that flight too long. Okay. All right, so these astronauts, let's talk about these astronauts a little bit. Um, these guys are fun. Yeah, they're pretty cool. I mean, they, they kind of just go by first names now, Bob and Doug. Like, I know. Everybody, like, everyone's like Bob and Doug. And not only that, that's their nicknames, too, because their full names are Robert and Douglas. Mm. But they're Bob and Doug. They're Bob and Doug to me. They're Bob and Doug, and they are friends. I mean, they're best friends. 
their wives are back. I mean, oh, oh my gosh. It's and so there we cute. go. There's Rob has the shot up right now. There is the dragon capsule. And you guys, they're sitting in that right now. They are already strapped in, ready to go, sitting in the dragon capsule. Yeah. And they are. They're best friends. Um, they're both married to astronauts. Yep. They both have a small son. Sons who are in elementary school. Yeah. It's No, it's really cute because they met, Bob and Doug, they met in the astronaut class in 2000. That's how they became friends. And that's where they also met their wives, who, like we just mentioned, are also astronauts. And so these, they all just kind of started growing okay. up together. Oh, Air Force One's going by, guys. Oh, that's cool. Our Emery's going to go take a picture. Can we see it at all? No. It's raining. No. That's all I see. All the, oh, oh, there it is. But yeah. it's on NASA Live. Yeah, they got, well, it's on our show, too. Yes. But yeah, so there's Air Force One. That's President Trump heading to Kennedy Space Center for this totally historic launch. Unbelievable. Amazing. I know. Gosh, I, I hope it happens today. <laughs> if it doesn't, though, the backup windows are this Saturday or Sunday. Saturday is at 3.22 p.m. Sunday is at 3 p.m. Uh, and we'll be here. That's right. Of Absolutely. <laughs> so President Trump is here. And Before that, we showed you the shot of the, of the astronauts sitting on top of the capsule. When I see that image of that capsule on top of that rocket, it really is what makes you think of Apollo days, though, right? And I think that's a huge thing to remember. So, you know, in Apollo, we had astronauts in a capsule flying up on a, on a rocket to space. Then we had that whole stretch of shuttle, right? I'm sure you guys remember the shuttle. Looks big, like a plane. Looks like a plane, big yeah. kind of a shuttle bus to space. Mm -hmm. This is, you know, the first time that we've got two guys in a little capsule on a rocket again. I don't that know if SpaceX crazy. likes the term a little capsule, but it is little compared to shuttle. It's a cozy capsule. It's a you know cozy. I mean, I mean, yeah. It's two guys that are on the end of a, you know, firecracker. You know, they're going to light that puppy and send them to space. It feels exciting and different. For and sure. then when they come back, they're going to splash down in the ocean again, just like they did in Apollo. Yeah. So I think that's one reason why so many people keep kind of making those comparisons mm -hmm. to, to Apollo program. Yes. Because it just looks like it, too. In fact, speaking of Apollo program, this morning, the astronauts got up at 9 a.m., and they had breakfast, mm -hmm. and Doug Hurley tweeted the classic steak and eggs breakfast. Is that a classic thing? Oh, Do yes. all the astronauts always have oh, steak and a, eggs oh, for yeah. breakfast? Yes. That's Why? Like a, I don't, it's like an Apollo 60s thing. I don't know. Is that Was that a classic American yes. dish? Yes, it was. Was? Is that no longer a classic I mean, American you know, dish? At a diner here and there, people have steak and eggs for breakfast. Yeah. I'm just going to be totally honest with you. I've never seen that on the menu for breakfast in an American establishment. You haven't been to middle of America. I haven't. That is no. true. I haven't you been, haven't to, the been to the Midwest. Um, you have not been to a diner. I think you've I been, have been to Maybe you've diners. never even been to a Denny's. I have been Waffle to House. Denny's. I have. Waffle House, I only have been once and I don't want to go back. Okay. Well, don't say that because maybe one day we'd like them to advertise on the show. Oh, but anyway. <laughs> yeah, you're, um, right. you're right. So they had steak and eggs for breakfast. And they then did. after that, they had a whole bunch of medical tests. Um, we don't know what those medical tests are. I assume it's very basic stuff, um, probably including heart rate, which reminds me, I really, really hope that when they launch, they tell us their heart rates. Oh yeah. Or at least that they like documented like in mission control, how they did for the Apollo era. Yes. Um, yeah, that would be really cool. Um, that's sort of like a fun thing that they used to release about astronauts, mm -hmm. you know, their heart rates on launch. Um, I actually was just reading that when... Uh, Crippen and Young went up on that first shuttle. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, what was it? Uh, Bob Crippen's heart rate was 130, and John Young didn't break 90 beats per minute. Like, isn't that fascinating, yeah. just the difference between them? No, that is. So it's really like, cool. it'll be interesting to see Bob and Doug, like, how, how that works out for them. It was John Young who didn't break 90, right? Correct. Do you think maybe because he was just such a seasoned astronaut? Maybe. He was the one who was on the last um, Apollo moon landing mission. Oh. He? Right, Emery? No. Yeah. Yes. He was on the last moon landing mission, Apollo 17. So he was like, I've been to the moon, shuttles a breeze. Maybe, maybe he was. I don't know. Yeah, you're right. I, I don't know. So astronauts woke up this morning at 9 a.m., had steak and eggs. Then they had some medical tests. Then they went over and they got suited up in those fancy mm -hmm. SpaceX suits. Yeah. You know, kind of controversial, those suits. They're very sleek and very modern looking. Why do you say controversial? I think anything that's different is controversial. People are just used to seeing the puffy orange, 
right or they're used to, they're just they're, we're so used to that yeah so like it's like they're just new they're different we've so never then, seen like do that. you think then like the orange shuttle shoots suits were controversial in 1981 when those were first introduced uh, probably they, they were different to, obviously than the apollo especially that orange color i'm sure people were yeah i don't know yeah no yeah i feel like those would be more controversial like come on yeah Anyway, they're very they're very sleek. They're very SpaceX-y. SpaceX designed these suits. They sewed the suits in Hawthorne at their factory right right next door to the rocket. They're yeah, making they, the rockets. They make the suit. They make the capsule. They make it all. They made it in-house. That's right. Mm -hmm. Made in America. So after that, they went over to mm -hmm. um, the ONC. They got suited up. Uh, and then from there, they got in the Teslas, the Model X, went to the pad. And now they are sitting in that capsule. And we're about an hour-ish away from the fueling beginning. My mom said their suits are amazing. Lina, <laughs> Botero. Okay. <laughs> what do you think about the suits, I Rachel? I don't love them, okay? I don't love them. I'm sorry. You don't have to apologize to me, maybe to my mom. You guys can like, duke it out. <laughs> I don't know why. I just, maybe I don't like change. Well, that sounds, I don't believe that. <laughs> Um, so we are in, oh, I forgot to be very important about the astronauts. They're both Trekkies. Are they really? They're big, big Oh my Trekkies. God, that is so true. They did mention that months ago. They got the shot. Did you see the shot where they, they did the signal? No, I didn't. Yeah. Oh, and that's what's great. kind of funny about that is, so in the space community, if you will, there is sort of a divide. Basically, you're a Trekkie or you're a Star Wars fan. So Star Trek, Star Wars. It's like yeah. you have to all sort of, everyone has to be on one side or the other. And that's funny that they're Trekkies riding on a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket. Because I don't know. I mean, we don't know, I think, for sure if SpaceX is just the Star Wars fan strictly. But their Falcon 9 rocket, the reason it's called Falcon is from the Star Wars Mill Millennium Falcon, the spacecraft that Han Solo rides. I mean... Yeah, so they're, they're, you could say they like Star Wars at least. I think so. And so now we have these two truckies riding on a Falcon. We do, yeah. And uh, I mean, NASA's administrator, Jim Bridenstine, he's a, he's a Star Wars guy. So like in the camp, he's on the Star Wars side. Okay. I'm on the Star Wars side. What side are you on? Oh, I'm definitely on the Star Wars side. I haven't seen anything about Star Trek. But our if other colleague over here, right now, I don't Trekkie. even know if we could do this show together. Honestly, maybe that's why. Maybe that's why Emery doesn't want to join us, though, because we're Star Wars fans, and he's a and he's a Trekkie, right? Yeah, you see, he just totally ignored us. It's a little brutal, the, the Trekkie versus Star Wars thing. Space Force logo though looks like the Star Trek uh, symbol, yes. the Star Fleet. So you think they're on the Star Trek side? Probably. Oh. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So we got Space Force and the astronauts with Star Trek and SpaceX and we can say Jim Bright and Science with NASA for the Star Wars side. Yes. Okay. And then there's us. Yeah. Yeah. We're well, pretty important, obviously. So, you know. Um, folks, if you're just tuning in, this is the USA Today and Florida Today live stream coverage of the historic SpaceX launch sending two NASA astronauts to the International Space Station. This is a first, folks. This is historic. It's the first time a private company is sending NASA astronauts to orbit to the International Space Station. It's the first time we've sent humans from American soil since 2011. Yeah, that's a big deal. It's the first time President Trump is here to witness the launch. Yeah. And it's the first time that this rocket and capsule will carry humans, really truly making it a test flight. And let's not forget, super dangerous. Like, it is. come on. I, I mean, mean, I mean, they do a ton flight, of tests, yeah. but this is, they, no humans have flown this. Yeah, so that in itself, I mean, granted, um, when asked that, when they asked the astronauts that, Doug did say, he was like, you know, yeah, like, through statistics, they'd say flying an entirely new spacecraft is more dangerous, but he actually prefers or says that the capsule design is safer than being in a shuttle, which is true. So... Of course, this is entirely new and very dangerous because human spaceflight in itself is very dangerous. But um, he actually feels, I guess, pretty confident about this capsule. Brian Stein, again, that's the NASA administrator. He actually said yesterday at a press conference that he he texted Bob and Doug and was like giving you that sort of that final out 
you know, he said, are you sure you really want to do this? Like you can say no, like right now, do it. And they said, no, we'll go for launch. Of course they did. Yeah. Imagine if they would have said no. Do you think Brian and I would have been like, ha, well, <laughs> psych. Yeah. <laughs> Sending them like an emoji, little sunglasses emoji, like, no. Nope. You're like, I was just, I was just pulling your leg, you guys. Yeah. No. I think that we, we know that they are 100% and they're doing this. And we're very excited that they are the brave men that are going to be doing this test flight today. Um, we're still hoping that weather is going to work out for us. When we look out at the window, it looks pretty bad. It's rainy. It's dreary. It doesn't look that bad right now, though. It's no longer raining. Yeah. Oh, no, it still is raining. I'm just kidding. Yeah, it's, it's raining. It's still not great. It's pretty dreary. I haven't seen lightning, though. I haven't seen lightning, and that's the key thing. Yeah. Yeah, so we can deal with that. It's 2.56. So we should have Winston Scott joining us any moment here. Um, Winston Scott's a former space shuttle astronaut, which is very cool. But he also serves as the like senior advisor to the president at Florida Tech University, which is the local university here on the Space Coast. And yeah, he's going to join us to talk about this launch, talk what it's like to be an astronaut. Mm -hmm. I mean, he was also a military test pilot before becoming an astronaut. So. He knows kind of a lot of the things that Doug and Bob are feeling or experiencing yeah. right now. I mean, when I spoke with him last, uh, I know he also said he was just like, yeah, those guys, the guys must be so excited, you know, and if he had the opportunity to ride on SpaceX's rocket, he would definitely take it too. So very, very exciting. Oh, here's Winston. Hello. I wonder if he can hear us. Hi. He can. can or at least he can see us. I can, I can, can you hear us, Winston? I can hear him. I can. Hey, Winston, can you hear us? I don't think he can hear us. <coughs> Winston, can you hear us? Well, I can hear him for sure. I can hear Winston. He can't hear us. Maybe he has his computer muted or. Hmm. Rob, maybe we should text him and see if he can. You can put in the private chat. Working on it right now. It looks like he's trying to fix uh, fix something. Or I'm just going to hold oh. up a hand in just a second. Okay, okay. can you hear me? There he is. Oh, oh, hey. We're all here, everyone. All right, good. Thank you, thanks for joining us. Yeah, thank you so much for taking. Glad time. to do this. My pleasure. So we already told everyone that you were a former space shuttle astronaut and that you're now the senior advisor to the president at Florida Tech. That is your correct title at Florida Tech, right? That, is, that is correct. Yeah. Uh -huh. So we've been telling everybody about the astronauts. Um, as I'm sure you know, Bob and Doug right now are already in the capsule sitting on top of the Falcon 9 rocket. The hatch has been closed. Yes. And, um, you know, I would love for you to just give us some of that insight. What, what do you think they're thinking and feeling right now? I think they are excited out of this world. They have been training for years for this flight, and it's finally down to the last couple of hours. They are hoping nothing goes wrong. They don't want to have to scrub and regroup and come back and do it again. They are excited. They're not nervous or afraid. They are, they are excited. They want to get the show on the road. That's what they're doing, what they're thinking. For sure. And so we also, I also mentioned, I told Rachel how when we last spoke, uh, I had asked you if SpaceX offered you the ride to go on Crew Dragon, you would take that. Uh, you know, after now being here and witnessing this launch happening and everything and everything goes smoothly, would you still take up that opportunity? Would you go be one of the next Crew Dragon passengers? Oh, you know, you can't sit back and watch something like this and not wish that you were somehow uh, involved in it. Even though my active duty time is, is over, I understand that it's time for uh, uh, Bob and Doug. Now, if somehow I could stow away in the back of the uh, capsule, I would sneak up there right now and do it, rag into space with them. Would love to. Oh, that would be awesome. Winston, I was, I was talking a little earlier about, I, I always loved when they revealed what the heart rate of the astronauts was at the time of launch. It, it just, for some reason, it just makes you have a sense of like how excited they were or, or just were they cool as a cucumber. Do you remember what your heart rate was? No, as a matter of fact, no one revealed it to us in real time. I'm sure they monitored it and it was on record someplace. But you know what? I, I suspect 
that most astronauts' heart rates maybe go up a little bit, but probably not that much. I think you'd be surprised at how cool and calm most people are. I can remember lying on my back and I was not afraid at all. I was not nervous. I was excited about it. And uh, I, I, again, I was, we, we, were, we were ready to go. Let's get the show on the road. Really? You weren't afraid know, at all? Like, like, what? what do you mean? I don't, how is there no, I mean, I, literally the only thing I could maybe even think of is like a roller coaster. Like if you're and excited. And I am always so nervous before roller coasters. Like always that, that <laughs> incline right before you drop. You know how a roller coaster goes? Like, oh my, I have to close my eyes. I can't even close. Is it your roller. career as an aviator? Like what does that? What makes you just not be afraid? I, I think it's something that you love to do. Remember, many many people, including Doug and, and uh, Bob and myself, we came from military aviation. So you're either an uh, Air Force pilot or Navy pilot. You've flown combat airplanes, sometimes in combat. Sometimes. So this is just the next step to what you've been doing your entire adult life. It's like strapping on a new uh, high-performance vehicle. You're excited about it. You you you're you just <laughs> again. That's just it's it's what you do. It's just who you are. I mean, it's a pretty big next step, though. <laughs> you're going to space. How many people can say they've been to space? Not many. Not it many. is a it is a big step, a big difference, and there's nothing like it. You know, because you go from Earth to orbit in a little over eight minutes. In the case of the shuttle, it's like eight minutes and thirty seconds. I believe this. Asking us eight minutes and 43 seconds. So you go from sitting on the launch pad to 17,500 miles per hour in about eight and one half minutes. It's an incredible ride. Nothing else like it on Earth. In fact, I can remember during my first flight on Endeavor, we launched at night, dark outside, obviously, but about halfway through the ascent, I could look out of the front windows and see the day half of the Earth coming. We launched at night, we flew all the way around to the day half in less than eight and one half minutes. So it's an incredible ride, but that's what you live for. That's why you, you come to this business. So yeah, what do you think that. about this weather? You're looking outside, I'm sure. What do you, what do, what do, what do you think? Uh, the weather, it does not look good at this spot right this minute, but you know the weather in Florida, if you don't like it, give it an hour, it'll change. We still have, what, about two hours, an hour and a half before actual launch time. So I'm, I'm thinking the weather is all moving off to the northeast and hopefully will clear out by launch time. I haven't heard an official forecast in a while, but I believe they're forecasting uh, a high percent chance of go an hour and a half. Right? It doesn't look real good right this minute, but I think it will improve. So, Winston, we're an hour and a half away from launch. Where are you currently and where are you going to go to view the launch when liftoff happens? Well, I just left Titusville. I was up just a couple of miles from the actual launch pad. I can look across and, and see the launch pad. But I am actually in my office now in Melbourne. And I'm going to just walk out back on the balcony and watch the launch from here. I can see the whole thing from, uh, from the balcony of my office right here in Melbourne. And uh, so, so that's what I'm going to do. Oh, that's pretty nice. Yeah, yeah anyway. well, you know, they, were, they were restricting uh, people to go on to the Cape to those who are actually working the launch. I suspect I could have made a phone call in, in Gaga Pass to go actually to the launch. But I'm, I'm kind of kind of comfortable right here. I'm going to chill, get a little, maybe a cup of coffee, walk out back and <laughs> watch the launch. From yeah, there. we can we can definitely tell you it's not super cozy out here. <laughs> no, <laughs> not at all. Say. It's a little rainy yeah. and yeah. So Winston, I'd love your your thoughts on on the commercial crew program. You know, so th this is something that's many many years in the making. And you know, when it first started. Um, it was pretty controversial. In fact, there were actually, you know, lots of folks inside NASA. There were even astronauts that were not supportive of this idea of private companies sending astronauts to space, to orbit, to the ISS. Um, but we're here now. It's happening. What, what, do you, what do you think about the program? I think it's fantastic. And it's, it's, uh, I'm glad it's here. It's actually long overdue. But uh, it's here now, and as you can see, it's been very, very, very successful. The uh, uh, SpaceX and a number of other companies have done a tremendous job in resupplying the International Space Station, flying cargo back and forth, done a tremendous job. SpaceX will likely be first today, but there are other private commercial companies coming along 
who will also have the capability of, of launching human beings into space and back. So this is exactly what's supposed to happen. NASA paved the way with all of the uh, early research and development. Now we have private companies coming in and using their business acumen to make space affordable and make it efficient. This is exactly what's supposed to happen. And uh, you're right, the, the idea is not new. I got involved personally about 15 years ago and uh, I was only one of many, many people who were pushing for uh, uh, the, the partnerships that you see now between the federal government and private companies. So this is this is fantastic. And as you can see, it, it's paid dividends and will continue to do so. I think also what's really fun about it is that we're going to have a variety of rockets and spacecraft, right? Yeah. I mean, when, a, when, if, when, when it was just NASA, we had the one rocket, we had the one spacecraft. But when we've got commercial crew, we've got SpaceX with Falcon 9 and Dragon. We're going to have Boeing, uh, you know, Starliner spacecraft going up on ULA's Atlas V rocket. That's right. Yeah. And so we're just going to see all of these cool combinations of rockets and spacecraft. And so it's going to just make launches, I think, even more interesting and exciting. For sure, because they're all going to be unique in their own way. Um, Absolutely. In fact, if you think about it, no one drives the same vehicle on the ground. You know, oh. a young single person might have a small compact car, a family might have a minivan, but then a company may have a semi, an 18 wheel semi. You've got a variety of vehicles. Same thing with, with airplanes. You might have private airplanes that hold maybe three or four people. Then you've got big airliners that hold three or 400 people. You have military planes doing a military mission. So there is no one size uh, to accomplish all missions. Same thing in space. Space vehicles will be designed and flown depending on the mission that they are required to perform. Just makes good sense. Yeah, that's a good comparison. It's a custom built spacecraft for that mission. Okay. Absolutely. In fact, uh, the, the Dragon, the Crew Dragon is built specifically for this mission. The Dragon's mission is to transport people back and forth to low Earth orbit. The Dragon won't do what the space shuttle did, but it doesn't have to. The space shuttle needed to transport 50,000 pounds to low Earth orbit and very, very large pieces. That's why we, we had to finish the International Space Station before we retired the shuttles. So the shuttles provide a totally different mission than what the uh, SpaceX Crew Dragon is going to provide. And we just saw the president stand up the Space Force. At some point, the Space Force will have vehicles. They may be unmanned and then manned, but they will be a different configuration depending on the mission they're required to perform. Yeah, totally. Um, Winston, so you've flown to space. I want to hear what's your favorite thing when you are in space, when you have exited Earth's atmosphere? And what do you think will be the thing that Bob and Doug are looking forward to the most when they also you know, escape this atmosphere? They haven't flown in nearly a decade. For Bob, it's definitely been a decade. Uh, no, for Bob, it's been a decade. Yeah, that's what I said, right? And then Doug, it's been almost nine years. He was the pilot on the last space shuttle mission. So what is, I guess, that most exciting moment for astronauts when they are on that rocket right before, you know, they either head to the space station or wherever? I'm not sure that you can point to one specific thing as the most favorite. I can tell you this from a pilot slash engineer standpoint, they are going to thoroughly enjoy operating the vehicle, putting it through its paces or monitoring it as it goes through its paces to be sure it does what it's supposed to do. So from a technical standpoint, that's going to be the favorite for them, just getting to pilot the vehicle. But from a human standpoint, the thing that's probably most uh, uh, exciting to people is just being there and looking out and staring down at the Earth from space. You get a whole new perspective from looking at Earth from space. The Earth is incredibly beautiful. It is so bright and pretty and it looks so peaceful. There are no words or pictures that can give you a, a true a picture of what it looks like to see it with your naked eye. So the different things that that uh, mean a lot to you, uh, depending on what view you're looking from, be it personal or, uh, or spiritual or technical or operational. But the whole experience is just surreal and no words can adequately describe it. That's amazing. It's interesting you, you bring up, you know, the, them wanting to put the spacecraft through its paces. They're going to get the opportunity to have those two manual control moments right are you have you been yes. following that winston can you explain yes. that 
Well, what they want to do is be sure that the vehicle is controllable, that it will do what you want it to do when you tell it to do it. The vehicle has to be maneuvering. It has maneuvering thrusters. The, the controls have to operate properly so the vehicle responds in an appropriate manner. If you want to roll left, it rolls left. It rolls left at an appropriate rate. You can start and stop it. You don't have any, any oscillations. So you, you look at the stability and control of the, of the, of the uh, vehicle. The uh, Dragon capsule has the ability to dock with the International Space Station autonomously. They can also fly it manually and dock. They can also undock, re-enter the atmosphere, fly it home. So all of those things have to be tested to be sure the vehicle will again operate the way it's supposed to. If you think about it, when people design new automobiles, the uh, automobile companies have test drivers to drive the car to be sure the car operates in an appropriate manner. It will accelerate properly, brake properly. When you turn the steering wheel, it will it will respond to your movements and it won't overdo it or underdo it. So if you extrapolate that out to a spacecraft, you want to be sure that it operates in an appropriate manner. And this will also be they'll be this will be the first time that they fly on a spacecraft that has a touch screen. They're not going to be using a lever or a stick. I mean, can you tell me, how would you feel if you were in that position, you know, also being a military test pilot? Oh, absolutely. This is this is state of the art. Now, the shuttles had uh, had multifunction displays. You had television screens, modern displays, but you had push buttons. You know, you didn't actually touch the screen. Well, touch screen is the state of the art today. One thing you have to be careful of with touch screen, again, to be sure that the dexterity is there. Where you place your finger is actually where the switch is, that you don't have to activate it too hard, that it does respond in an appropriate manner. There's no bounce back. There are all kinds of issues. If you, if you think about what happens with your cell phone, Every once in a while, you may miss dial. You think you're hitting one number or a letter and, and something else pops up. You want to be sure that does not occur. You want to be sure that the dexterity is there with the suit, with the, with the gloves, that you can activate the touch screen with the gloves. The font becomes very important. It, it, there's just so much to it that the things we uh, take for granted here on the ground become extra important up in orbit. Personally, that's the one kind of Thing about the dragon that freaks me out a little bit. I would be a little freaked out about a touch screen and things not quite sliding or you know <laughs> rolling or whatever. I like buttons, you know, just a good well, lever. Well, to, <laughs> yeah, to be sure, the touch screens they have are a whole lot better in quality and response than the touch screens we have in front of us on our desktops. That's for sure. Right. Okay, so now I have a I have a very controversial question for you. Sure. Do uh -oh. you remember what you had for breakfast on the on the day of your launch? Absolutely. I had the traditional steak and eggs. You did? As matter, yeah, as a matter of fact, almost everybody on our crew on both missions had steak and eggs. We did have one young woman, Dr. Kalpana Chavla. Uh, we called her Casey. Casey was a vegetarian, so Casey did not have the steak and eggs, but as I recall, everybody on both my flights had the traditional steak and eggs for breakfast. Absolutely. <laughs> now, it's a, tra it's a tradition because it goes back to Apollo, right? I mean, is that, that's why it's traditional? It goes back to Apollo. It, in fact, it probably goes back to Mercury. I, yeah. I'm not sure, but I bet the Mercury folks all ate steak and eggs, too. And so it goes all the way back there. You know, oh, there's some... Is it a good, hearty meal? Absolutely. Yes, good, hearty meal. Uh, the other traditions that the public doesn't hear about, after a, a successful launch, when the crew is in orbit, the families, now in this case, the, the, the families will, will probably be, uh, may or may not be present due to the pandemic, but the wives and so on, but the families will dine on traditional Navy beans. That's, that's a tradition that goes all the way back to the Mercury program. So there's certain traditions that we, we like to follow and staking eggs for breakfast is, is one of those. I would. I prefer the steak and eggs over the navy bean meal myself. Oh, I think. Navy, I mean, beans. Yeah, I navy, navy beans and cornbread are good. Hot sauce, ham, and cornbread. Oh, okay. You're missing. Okay. Good old southern meal. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you for letting us know that. Um, that that is in fact what Bob and Doug had this morning. Yeah. Uh, Doug tweeted it out this morning, so we know he did have steak and eggs. Um, so they are. They're ready. They're hearty. They're fueled up. They're yeah. They got a lot of protein in them. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, we well, when you think about it, when, oh, when you think ahead. about it, they are uh, they they entered the capsule what a couple of hours ago. 
So they they will they will lie there for three hours or three and a half hours before actual liftoff. So you know you you're on your back for a long time. You've been awake a long time before you actually lift off. So yeah, you do want a good hearty breakfast to carry you through. I mean, yeah, breakfast is the most important meal of the day. It is. Yeah, it is. <laughs> well, Winston, we appreciate so much you joining us and filling us in on all your insights. For sure. Oh, Thank the pleasure is so mine. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Appreciate Enjoy it. Enjoy the launch. Take care now. Good luck. Bye bye. Bye bye. That was so cool. That was awesome. He's so awesome. He is. Every time I speak to him, we always have like such great discussions, and he always tell, he, like we always kind of go off topic a bit. Um, and he just starts telling me this other story and everything. I love it. Um, it's one of the huge perks of being on the Space Coast. Yeah. We got astronauts all over the place. He's totally We're very lucky. We have spoke to so many astronauts. I know. Yeah. Which one's your, who? How, Don't ask me that. <laughs> okay. I can't play favorites. All right, you can't play favorites, but I guess which, what are some of the few that have like stood out the most? I mean, I'll, I'll say like Apollo stuff because you know, yeah. Alan Shepard is my favorite astronaut. I know, I know, I know. Okay, I'm sorry <laughs> to bore you. <laughs> I did get to meet him when I was a kid, so that's probably why. Oh, okay. You and know. he's also the first American in space. Yeah, and he was just kind of feisty, and you know, he, he had was just, just he funny, and feisty. I don't know, I just liked him. What about you? Who's my favorite astronaut, or which has been the interview that I have enjoyed the most? Okay, both. Um, favorite astronaut? I don't know. I don't know. I can't answer that one. I'm sorry. There's just two. Then why did you have me ask the question? I didn't want you oh, to ask that okay. question. That's why I asked the different question. Okay. So who's your favorite astronaut to interview? I wouldn't say favorite. Like you said, I can't play favorites. <laughs> okay. But the one that I stood out the most was when I interviewed Al Warden. Oh, he was so awesome. Yeah. He um, recently oh, died a few did. months ago, which was, you know, very sad. But we got to interview him back in November. And that That's was. At Florida Tech. Yes. And that was. Amazing. Actually, um, Winston wasn't on the same panel as Al, but they were both at that same event. Yeah, they and were. He was great. I just remember the first thing that obviously I had to ask him um, that every journalist has to ask all of their interviewees is, is it okay to record this interview uh, to make sure that you know they don't mis we don't misquote you or anything? So I asked him that, and his response was, "I don't give a rat's ass," and like that just has stood stood out. That stuck out so yeah, much. Yeah, I'd say that that, that describes him very well. It describes him Steve. perfectly. Yeah. So, you guys, we have some cool videos we're going to go to. We're actually going to go to a video, I believe, of the Dragon capsule that's explaining a little bit more of the capsule in detail. Yeah. So, Rob is going to pull that up for us. Yeah, and before he Under does... Under NASA's... Never mind. Yep. Never mind. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, I was just going to say that, you know, weather is still, you know, it's looking okay and launch is still go. We are now I don't, a little bit over an hour away until liftoff, uh, but now we'll go ahead and go to that video. Sorry, Rob. Under NASA's commercial crew program, SpaceX and Boeing are planning on sending astronauts from their respective spacecraft to the International Space Station from U.S. soil, a first since the space shuttle program retired in 2011. SpaceX will use its Crew Dragon capsule, a modified version of its Cargo Dragon spacecraft, to send humans to the ISS while Boeing will send its Starliner spacecraft. I'm Florida Today space reporter Antonio Jaramillo, and this is what you need to know about SpaceX's Crew Dragon capsule. Currently, SpaceX's Dragon capsule is only certified to send cargo to the space station, which it's been doing since 2012, but now it will also send humans. The Dragon capsule, referred to as Crew Dragon, is capable of carrying up to seven passengers, as well as some cargo. Unlike the Cargo Dragon capsule, Crew Dragon has windows and seats inside to accommodate the astronauts. Both the Cargo Dragon and Crew Dragon launch atop SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket. Crew Dragon's first launch was an uncrewed test flight in March 2019 to test the capabilities of the spacecraft to make it safely to the ISS and return back to Earth, which it did. Then in January 2020, SpaceX conducted an in-flight abort test of the Crew Dragon capsule to make sure the spacecraft can safely abort itself if there is a malfunction with the rocket during launch. Now coming up is the big milestone. Crew Dragon will once again head to the space station, only this time with humans. Called this Demonstration 2 or Demo 2 mission, SpaceX will send NASA astronauts Bob Benkin and Doug Hurley aboard Crew Dragon to the ISS. 
Thanks for watching and make sure to go to floridatoday.com slash space for more space coverage. That capsule is unbelievable. Yeah, it's honestly pretty sleek. So I think like about this. For the past um, several years, the past, so the, the shuttle retired in 2011 and astronauts have been flying on the Soyuz rocket, which is the Russian rocket to the International Space Station. Um, you know, nothing against the Soyuz, but it's a Russian built rocket, right? I mean, yeah. the, even like the, the labels are in Russian. It's, it's just not the same. It's certainly nothing like the luxury, <laughs> the custom built SpaceX capsule that these guys are about to fly on. Oh, for close. sure. I mean, and also, I don't know if also if there's then a difference with it than being like a government spacecraft now versus a commercial spacecraft. Do you think because it's SpaceX and everything, they made this more luxurious, sleeker, fancier, sexier, all that jazz? You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I do. And I think so. Yes, absolutely. It's SpaceX. They designed their own space suits. I know. In-house, right next to their rocket and their capsule. The detail. I mean, and that really is an Elon Musk thing. And we'll, and we'll talk about him, you know, later. But that's that's absolutely what SpaceX is, is all about. Um, so if you, if you are just joining us, we are here at Kennedy Space Center. We are on, only an hour and a half away. Less. Less than an hour and a half away from the historic launch of SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket sending two NASA astronauts to the International Space Station, the first yeah. private company ever to spend to send NASA astronauts to space. The first time we launched astronauts to space from American soil yeah. since 2011. Amazingly, we are on target. Um, you know, the weather does not look good, especially if you're standing here in Florida. It looks pretty bad. Yeah, it doesn't look great, but it's right now it seems to be cooperating with us, which is what we need. It didn't cooperate with us when we wanted to do this show at the roof of our Florida Today blockhouse that you guys could be seeing NASA's vehicle assembly building in the background as opposed to- It was a beautiful shot. It was, yeah. We'll do it for the next one. Definitely for you the guys, next one. Like a tornado warning came and our actual tent blew away and broke into pieces. I think so, it was just like a mini tornado just for us. Lynette's probably gonna be pretty pissed She's actually. gonna be so upset with us. She, uh, she's the one who let us borrow the Florida Today tent. It's just, it's just such bad luck because only our tents got destroyed. There's a bunch of other news outlets here on, all on top of their own yeah. block houses. And none of their tents were affected. Mm -hmm. But ours just, poof. Yeah. And we had weights on it and everything, you guys. I don't know. It's just, that's, that's the way life is. So we're inside of our block house here at Florida today. And uh, we're still, you know, covering the launch, of course. We're also here with Emery Kelly, who is behind us. He is manning the Scribble chat which is a live update constantly being fed of everything that's happening with the mission. So if you like that kind of thing, go to floridaday.com forward slash space. Yeah. You know, I never say the forward slash. I just say slash space. I guess the backslash isn't that like popular. Like when do you use that on a website? I don't. So I don't okay. think you do. You, you could just say slash is what you're saying. I definitely only have ever done that. Okay. So we're about to go to Florida Day reporter Tim Walters who is in Merritt Island, he's on location, and it's gonna be very interesting to see how many people are there. Especially with this weather. It's tricky, so if you'll recall, um, NASA Administrator Jim Bridenstine came out and said, please do not attend this launch. He really yeah. publicly said, uh, we wanna take everything very seriously with coronavirus and health measures, and we're you know, basically asking people not to come to Kennedy Space Center for the launch. Um, but, you know, that's that's tricky because people do want to see a historic launch. And even still, okay, he's saying, he's telling, you know, the whole world, NASA's asking you guys to stay at home and watch the launch. But also, I mean, okay, maybe then we don't have tourists or um, people flocking here to the Space Coast. But then there's the people who already live here. Like, of course, they're going to want to go out and everything. Um, even just like how Winston, he's going out on um, to the roof of his building where yeah. he works. So, so yeah, so it'll definitely be interesting to see. But even though that's the case, and we were before coronavirus hit, we were expecting half a million people to be here. Um, I really wonder, regardless of coronavirus, if we still would have had then that many people outside with this rain. How, do you remember how it was for past shuttle missions when it was also really bad weather? No. Hopefully Tim can tell us because I mean, he's been at Florida today during yeah, the shuttle era. As a local, same thing. You just, you know, if you live here, you you walk outside. That's just what you do. You just walk out wherever you are. You look, you walk outside. So it's it's the folks that are really coming in 
on their RVs and you know lining all of 528. That's going to be what's interesting. For sure. Some questions. Okay. Oh, yes. Hey, there's Tim. Hi, Tim. Hey, how you guys doing? Can you hear me? Yes. Awesome. How you doing? I'm down here at Kelly Park East on Merritt Island. What's the scene? Uh, it's pretty packed down here. We can see right across the Banana River. You can see that westbound is basically a parking lot up there. Uh, I drove through there probably, you know, about two o'clock or so as I was coming down here. And uh, I was coming from the port direction heading westbound. So uh, people were all trying to get off to the, you know, get off the river. I used to shoot shuttle launches up there. But I know that sometimes if you get down there, it can take two or three hours just to get your car off of that riverbank there by the Banana River. Because it really is right across the river from where you can see the uh, launch pad. So uh, that's kind of where we are now. It stopped raining for now, which is really nice. It's poured here a couple of times, some scary cells. I'm trying to give you a, a little bit of look at what's behind me here. You can see, uh, you know, people yeah. at a pavilion and uh, we just had a boat leave uh, filled up with people taking them out into the river. And of course, people dropping in their private boats here at Kelly Park. There's tons of those. So uh, everybody just uh, in anticipation, you know, we got about what, an hour and seven minutes. Tim, could you try, um, I don't know if it's possible, but could you try flipping your, your camera to so that we can see kind of what you're seeing? Uh, let's see. Sure. So we've got some people waiting around. That's the river right there. You can't really tell. Uh, I mean, that's that's the parking lot heading toward the port of what is normally 528. So it's probably a little bit hard. Uh, and I'm doing this backward using a little handheld tripod just in case I have to run for the rain. But, uh, you right. know, I'm not sure how well you can see right down there. But uh, that's the basin. Yeah, it doesn't and look too packed from our view, but obviously you have a much better uh, view than we do. Yeah, it's hard to see the cars up there on 528. We're also, we've got a lot of people waiting here down by the cars. And uh, we got a few people just kind of lining up. But with an hour to go, I have a feeling people are still kind of waiting. Now, we're pretty much packed here. The parking at Kelly Park is, uh, is just about done. People are finding spots. But they're also going over to Kelly Park West, which is right across the street. And, uh, you know, just crossing Banana River Drive here. So um, see if I can, I don't know if you can see the bridge over, let's see. But the bridge over Banana River Drive right there is, is pretty packed. But uh, again, it's probably hard to see on this little cell phone. Yeah, so, um, so you can kind of see, can you can you tell the amount of people that maybe we're looking at down here on the riverbanks and things? Uh, so people, have you, have you talked to people? What's sort of the vibe? Uh, I mean, people are just kind of hopeful and hoping that the rain stays away. Um, you know, it, it looks like, you know, I've had a couple of people ask me if this is a good place to view the launch. And quite honestly, it, it's a beautiful location to view the launch. I mean, uh, I actually grew up about two miles from here, uh, right off of Banana River Drive. And we used to walk right back on our back porch. We'd watch the Titan shots in the 80s when I was a little kid. We'd watch the shuttles. And uh, uh, from 2006 to 2008-ish, uh, I used to come down here and shoot the shuttle launches. And then we started doing the live broadcast from Kennedy Space Center. So that's uh, probably the last three or four years of the launch. Got to watch all of the shuttle launches from right out where you guys are. So seeing you there in the blockhouse, a little bit jealous today, but you're going to have a beautiful view there. Oh, thank you, Tim. We're, we're, um, we're super excited to be here. We're bummed. We were going to be on the roof, but we got rained out, tornadoed out. So we're down here in the, in the bunker. Yeah. Um, but, you know, as I'm sure you know, there's a bit of a controversy here. You know, we had Jim Bridenstine, the NASA administrator, basically asking people not to come to Kennedy Space Center, not to come to Florida for the launch. And then we had our local sheriff come out and say, come on down. We want you. Um, you know, local businesses in this area have really been hit hard because of the coronavirus. And we're really looking forward to this launch as a cash infusion to sort of kickstart their companies and get business yeah, going. Yeah, again. What's the, what, what are you seeing down there? Do people sort of, are they conscious of that? Do they not really concerned about coronavirus or what are you seeing? Uh, I mean, quite honest, it seems a, a very little concern out here. There's a lot of people. I have my mask right here in my top pocket. I was wearing it around and I took it off just to talk to you guys. But, uh, you know, I've seen a couple of masks, but, uh, you know, it's probably 95% no mask to 5% people with masks. And maybe as they come out of their cars and get a little closer to the banks to watch the launch, that may change. But when I was watching the people get onto that boat, uh, it didn't seem to be the case. And oh, it looks like they're showing some pictures that I took while driving down uh, 528 earlier. So that's literally okay. on the uh, that's on yeah. the north bank of 528 heading westbound. Oh, and man. so, uh, yes, and that was at 2 o'clock. So right now at 3.30. And police were setting up an orange guard. 
uh, down the middle of 528. You know, just one of those like orange rollout kind of fence type of things. I, I see some uh, lightning kind of flashing back there in the background, too. So, uh, but yeah, so the police are trying to stop people from number one, doing U turns on 528, number two, walking across 528, or number three, trying to cut across to, to get to the other side. So, uh, you know, the West Bank was packed too because you're basically just looking over the road across the river and you can see just fine down there. So, you know, that's basically right down there within a half mile of the port. That's definitely packed. That's packed. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Well, very, very interesting. Yeah, no, I mean, I was seeing people starting to line up when I was driving here at 9 a.m. So, which I, well, I drove through I-95, so it was totally easy for me. Yeah. But yeah, and I was on 528. Yeah, yeah, I was coming from Cocoa Beach on 528, and people were just starting at 9 a.m. So yeah, and and I can tell you, when I came here, uh, right about two o'clock, I was at, I decided to kind of take the long way from where I live over in Vieira, and I came down Pineda so I could drive down A1A just to see what was going on, and you know that stretch right past Patrick Air Force Base, people were just starting to line some of those beaches, you know, Second Light Beach and some of those down there, um, and then as I got closer, like the area around Coconuts you know, people with their chairs and heading out to the beach. But boy, around Ranjan, it kind of looked like a normal launch. I mean, just people everywhere, parking everywhere, you know, license plates I saw from Rhode Island and Colorado. And I think I even saw a Wyoming one, the old like brown kind of ugly looking Wyoming oh, wow. license plate. So, I mean, there are people truly from all over down there in Cocoa Beach. And then as I, I went past that, it just got more and more packed. The area off of A1A where you go to the pier, uh, you know, there was a lot of cars turning there and then it just kind of became a parking lot. And I just had to kind of wade down 528 eastbound to get off at, uh, or I'm sorry, westbound to get off at Banana River Drive. And then uh, I parked down here at Kelly Park because, uh, again, I knew that this would be a good place to watch it. And I can still uh, get out of here probably without waiting for three or four hours down here just for people to dissipate. Oh, yeah. I hear some sirens. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see what I got right now. That is a looks like one of those. uh let's see for like fire chief type of trucks with red lights flashing uh are they turning in here <laughs> okay yeah they are actually turning in here so there's some lights flashing i don't see any uh type of emergencies around here but we'll uh we'll, hey live on the scene you we'll kind of learn together um let's see yeah it's definitely a brevard county fire rescue pickup pick truck type of vehicle well, we got, so, uh, uh, while we wait out, for that, uh, we've got a comment on Facebook. Marshall Ward asked if we have launched, if SpaceX has launched. No, the launch hasn't happened yet. Launches, uh, let's launch the schedule for 4.30 oh, no. p.m. And we are still go. It's actually T minus 60 minutes from the launch. So, count down. And that will down to the minutes. We are an hour away from sending two NASA astronauts on the SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket to the International Space Station. It is a long time coming. Yeah. I mean, it's just getting realer and realer. Is that a word? No, I, don't know. I don't think so. I don't think so. Well, I so sorry. So, guys, I hate to break in. It, it sounds like I just had uh, someone who was explaining to me, apparently somebody who was sitting in their car, maybe had the engine running. A little car fire has started here behind me. So let well, me see if I can uh, get this angled where we see some police lights here. But yeah, they're just checking on somebody's vehicle. It sounds like uh, maybe we had a little bit of a car fire here. Can you see the, the lights? Am I angling it good for you? Uh, oh yeah, I see, well, the light. I can see the sirens. Well, that's too bad. Hopefully yeah, everyone's so, okay. Somebody so it looks good. like they got a couple of cars up here checking that out, but uh, nothing major. Everybody looks to be okay. I think they just want to make sure that, uh, you know, no, no flaming cars break out here uh, as we right. wait for the launch. Of course, people are getting a little crazy with their little gas grills, probably. Barbecuing. <laughs> I wish we were barbecuing, but no. Oh, I not. know that those steak and eggs now are sounding See, to sound pretty now good. I wasn't complaining. You might be sold I just on steak and eggs. I was already sold. I had oh. just didn't know that was a classic American okay. breakfast. I'm gonna make you some. Oh, that would be so nice. Yeah. Yeah. I'm down for that. I heard you talking to Winston Scott earlier. I was watching from the car while it was raining, and uh, you know, I gotta say, love Winston Scott. Um, you know, great astronaut. I was introduced to him probably about 10 or 12 years ago. He was reading the children at a library and it was an event I was covering. And it was just so Winston Scott to see, you know, 30 little children just sitting there enthralled as, you know, here's this multi-time astronaut talking to them and, and reading them a book at the West Melbourne Library. He's so awesome. And we're so lucky that he's here and available to us. I mean, we're just thrilled. Yeah. So Tim, thank you so much. And we'll check back in with you. Let us know if there's something else going on or 
you know, we, you know, be on standby. Yeah. Let's oh, no sure problem at all. Hey, I appreciate it. And, uh, you know, t tell Elon Musk to, to push those clouds away because there's a lot of people down here that want to that want to see that rocket go up. So uh, let's light that candle. We all do. Trust me. All right. See you guys. Elon Musk. Bye, Tim. I mean, it's funny that he would say that, you know, have Elon get rid of the clouds. It does kind of feel like there's nothing Elon Musk can do. Right. Like this is a man who um, he's a former software engineer. Um, he has absolutely no space experience, and he built a company that has been chosen by NASA to send NASA astronauts to the International Space Station. Yeah. By the way, at the same time, building a little car company called Tesla. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's an unbelievable achievement uh, of what he's accomplished and what we're seeing come into fruition today. It's surreal, honestly. What is Rob showing us? Oh yeah, that's the uh, that's the astronauts in the capsule. Look at that touch screen, you guys. I it mean, just looks so futuristic. It's so awesome. They're in there hanging out, getting ready, running through just all kinds out. of tech. No biggie. <laughs> yeah, no. Um, I just like no words. Oh, those are the future. Those are the upcoming astronauts. Yes, so that'll be, be on, in the yeah official mission. Yes. There's the crew access arm. That arm is what goes out to the capsule. Um, that's going to be a big moment when they retract that arm. And I don't know if we mentioned. So were they launching from Pad 39A here at Kennedy Space Center? Pad 39A. That's where the shuttle launches took off from. That's where the Apollo launches took off from. I mean, Apollo 11 launched. Uh, yeah. Uh, so it's definitely very, very cool that we are once again launching humans from there. And but now it looks very different from how it used to. I mean, before it was red and looked older. I mean, now it's all black and white and SpaceX. Again, again the SpaceX makeover. Hey, hey Rachel cool. and Antonia. Um, I just uh, we just got a photo from uh, the traffic camera on State Road uh, 528, and I, it's a it's a blurry shot. But I just want to show you what the traffic looks like on um, on 528 right now. So okay, let's see it. That's that's uh, that's the crowds of people that are that are out on uh, 528. You can yeah. see right there in the center the uh, the the crews putting up the orange barrier to to stop people putting uh, stop people from making U turns on um, on 528. Uh, I just I it I it takes me back to to shuttle launches. Truly, um, I mean that's not. That's not even close to what would be there for a shuttle launch, and I'm sure that the rain has kept some people away, as well as the coronavirus pandemic. But uh, but this is just this is kind of crazy. So I just wanted to make sure you guys got to got to see that. Wow! No, thank you so much for showing us that, Rob. Um, it's unbelievable. Yeah. Um, I'm I'm glad we're not out there. <laughs> so so we were um, talking about Elon Musk. I mean, it's uh, impossible. Uh, to not talk about Elon Musk when you're talking about SpaceX. Um, yeah. Again, this is a man who's a former software engineer who you know founded some early software companies that did you know very well. He was a part of PayPal. He um, but always had his sights on space. He's a he's a he's a kid of the Apollo generation, and he absolutely loves space. And he yeah. has always had his goal to be to get to Mars. He really feels like to save humanity, we have to be a multi-planetary species. And this uh, Dragon capsule, the Falcon 9 rocket, these are just steps on his path to get to Mars. We will not go to Mars on the Dragon capsule, but he has to prove these steps along the way until we can build the spacecraft to get to Mars. So it's it's pretty fascinating. Yeah, I, I can't even imagine the emotions that are running through his head right now. I mean... Well, we could check Twitter. <laughs> That's true. I wonder if he's, he's been on a Twitter storm ever since he had a, a baby. Actually, what two weeks ago? Three yeah, weeks let's ago? Talk that baby's name. Um, I have read now articles on how to pronounce it. Go for it. What do you got? So it's how do you do X Ash A twelve. Okay. That's what I've heard. Emery, have you heard anything differently? Oh. Aaron is asking, is the launch still happening? I hear there's a tornado warning. There was a tornado warning. In fact, Aaron, our tent uh, was broken and flew away, um, but the tornado warning is over. 
And so the launch is still happening. It is a go for 4.33 p.m. today. We are getting very close to launching humans to the International Space Station. So we are a go. Yeah, that's correct. In about 11 minutes, we're going to see if the uh, SpaceX launch director has verified go for propellant mode, which basically means is the rocket good to begin fueling? Um, that is a critical moment. I mean, basically, yeah. the astronauts are on the rocket at that point. Um, and, you know, it's a little dangerous. I mean, it's, 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 it's um, a certain kind of procedure that not every rocket company does, but it's what SpaceX does. So that's a very key moment when they decide to go ahead and fuel the rocket with the astronauts on the rocket. For sure. And at that point, they're also going to decide, based on weather, if they are going to proceed with fueling. You know, because everything might be fine with the rocket and everything, but if weather isn't looking good at T-45, they, they're they not going to fuel, and they're going to uh, delay until Saturday. Yeah. So definitely, definitely, we will find out. Rob's little weather map there. I don't know. It looks pretty good. I'm no weather girl, but... Um, I'd like to be one, actually. That really? was always my backup job. I think you've told me that. Yeah. Pointing at maps, talking about weather. Look at the, you know, we've got some green squalls going through. It looks good. And there's no red, there's no yellow. Um, but of course, we don't know. It's still um, a go for now. For sure. Um, meteorology was never really my forte. Was that even something you studied? No. Oh. <laughs> It's precisely for that reason. Yeah. So um, we are getting close to checking in with another one of our reporters who's in Cape Canaveral. But before that, I wanted to show another uh, video. Do we have the video of the, the information about the Pad 39A? We should. No. Okay. That was not on your list. Not on my list. Okay. By the way, that voice is the voice of, of Rob. Rob <laughs> Landers is our producer. He's also our director of broadcast at Florida Today. There he is. We could not be doing this live stream without him. That's very true. Maybe we can show them uh, oh, the Elon Musk video. We're going to show the astronaut video. That's what we have up. Okay. For the first time since the space shuttle program retired back in 2011, American astronauts will once again launch the space from U.S. soil. Only this time, it will be on a commercial crew vehicle. I'm Florida Today space reporter Antonio Jaramillo. Under NASA's commercial crew program, SpaceX and Boeing are planning to send astronauts to the International Space Station. But SpaceX is scheduled to send two NASA astronauts as soon as this month. The two astronauts who will fly off to space from Kennedy Space Center in the coming weeks are NASA astronauts Bob Benkin and Doug Hurley. Both former space shuttle astronauts, Benkin and Hurley, were part of the same NASA astronaut class back in 2000 and have each flown to space two times, though never together. While in the same astronaut class, Benkin and Hurley became friends and even attended each other's weddings. Now, they're prepping for their first space flight together on SpaceX's Crew Dragon capsule slated for May 27th. The last time Benkin flew to space was on STS-130 in February 2010. Hurley, meanwhile, was the pilot for the last space shuttle mission in July 2011. So those are the astronauts that we are sending to the International Space Station today. Bob and Doug. We just call them Bob and Doug around here. That's true. I mean, I don't. I think they're okay with that. I think so. They they seem like really cool guys. In fact, not that long ago, Tony and I got to run out here and we saw them drive by in their Tesla. And they were and waving they at were us. Waving. That was. I, I thought that was so cute. I honestly thought their windows were going to be up. We weren't going to see anything. But there we are. I mean, they didn't slow down. Granted, they weren't the ones driving the Teslas. I'm True. sure if they were, they would have slowed it's down for us. It's hard to drive a Tesla slow. Is it? It is. They just don't go slow. Why not? I, it's just electric cars. It's a you know, it's a it's a performance vehicle. Huh. Anyway. Anyways, yeah, but it was just, it was very, very cool. Um, like I had mentioned earlier in this broadcast, this is the first human launch that not only am I covering, I am getting to see in person. I can't describe the emotions that are running through my head. I have had so many people, like friends and family, just asking me, how are you feeling, Tony? Like, are you excited? And I'm just like, I'm just numb. They're like, at what time did you wake up today? I've been up since three in the morning. Um, I know like our, like I know you and Emery also didn't sleep that much. It's just been crazy. But yeah. um, when you imagine that they are sitting up there on that rocket right now, 
to humans. It really makes it very real. Yeah, for sure. I mean, yeah, they have a heartbeat. The last time anything was in the Crew Dragon capsule, it was a little Earth plush toy that was adorable. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. Um, and then also a test dummy named Ripley after the alien movie franchise um, character called Ripley, which the, how do you pronounce her name? Sigourney? Sigourney, Sigourney Weaver. Sigourney Weaver. Um, thank you. Sorry about that, you guys. Oops. But, uh, <laughs> But yeah, I mean, those, they weren't human beings. It was a toy and a mannequin, essentially. And now we have human flesh. Human flesh, absolutely, Bob and Doug. So they are up there and we are, I think, what, four minutes away, Emery, from finding out if, if fueling's gonna start. Mm -hmm. Two minutes away to find out if fueling is going to start. That's a huge milestone moment if they are gonna go ahead and decide to fuel this vehicle. I mean, honestly, if they do, doesn't that, that means we're a go, don't you think? Until, I mean, they're going to try to go until the last minute um, unless know. something happens. Yeah. But so, you remember guys, so uh, I just got a text from Tim Walters, uh, who was on with us earlier at Kelly Park. Uh, he says that the, the clouds are clearing. He is seeing blue skies to the west and is hopeful that that is, uh, that is a good omen for us for, uh, for a 4.33 on-time launch today. Uh, and our next guest, Susie Fleming Leonard, who is at Rusty's at the Port, uh, is uh, trying to log in right now. Um, and I will let you know when she actually gets, uh, gets logged into our system here. No worries. We want to wait. We want to be here at T minus 45 to make sure that we are go for fueling before we hop in with Susie because uh, she's great and we'll definitely have things to talk about with her. So we'll first get that milestone marker uh, ready. But that's really good to hear. We need all the good omens we can get. I mean, this morning, it wasn't you and I were good. very stressed out. It wasn't looking out. good when I was at my house. It was thundering. It was lightning. It was horrible. And it was just, I remember thinking, like, why are we even doing this? Why are we even pretending we're going to have a launch today? <laughs> it just doesn't seem possible. But it is Florida. And we do know that Florida weather can we're just. We're that? go to fuel. We're go to fuel. It's happening. Oh, my God. That just gave me chills. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. Whoa. Okay. So it, it, it's, we're, we are really getting very close. It's getting very real. Um, they are go for fuel. So that means that um, they're taking this very seriously. And that also means they're feeling pretty darn good about the weather. Yep. And I trust them. That's so, that's so Elon Musk, right? To have everybody go against him the weather to be against him the whole world and is, he just be like ha, in your he's face, just like a pandemic to be against him <laughs> on the launch it doesn't matter how many naysayers there are it doesn't matter if the weather's we're gonna prove you all wrong we're gonna jump the fence so that poll is complete jump the fence. To oh, the oh, coming on so, okay guys, we've got susie I'm I'm food and dining okay. I'm going to go inside. And she is at Rusty's at the port. In Cape Canaveral. Yes. Have we ever very been to popular, Rusty's? We've not been to Rusty's. We haven't been we to Rusty's. We always go to grill. So, Reminder, so, control yeah. room, on hold and launch Cape Canaveral. Yeah, why haven't we done that? I'm hey, really Susie. hungry. Hey, Susie. It froze a little bit. Uh, oh, looks here. like Susie is frozen. Okay. Well, she's at Cape Canaveral, which I'm assuming is probably pretty busy. I would, I would think a lot of people would there watching the launch. Susie, if you come back, let us know if there's a lot of people there. That's what we want to know, what the scene is like. For sure. Um, yeah, yeah, she's, she's gone. Okay, we lost Susie. Bye-bye. Yeah, the connection must be pretty poor over well, there. I'm, I'm, it must I'm, be very busy. I'm thinking it's very packed. I'm yeah. sure a lot of people are there and that um, there is... Oh, <gasps> access arm is being retracted That's, as we speak. Woo! I mean, the astronauts are there, they're by themselves now. That's right. Another huge milestone. So the crew access arm is retracting and the rocket is being fueled. And that just means we are getting closer and closer and closer to this happening. We are only... Um, We're only 44 minutes away. Yeah, 44 minutes away from launch. There is the crew capsule, that is the Dragon crew capsule that you're seeing atop of the SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket. 
slated to send astronauts Bob Binken and Doug Hurley to the International Space Station in 44 minutes. Amazing. I mean, yeah, we can't even describe the excitement that we're feeling. Imagine also then what their wives are feeling. I mean, these are former NASA astronauts. Bob Benkin is married to Megan MacArthur. Doug Hurley's married to Karen Nyberg. They have both flown to space. Uh, to space. Sorry, my words are just jumbling all over the place. Um, I mean, they know actually what their husbands are going through. And at the same time, they also then just have that constant, I think, worryment of just being their wives and everything, oh being gosh, the mother yeah. of their children. It's just, I, I don't know how I would feel if I were in their shoes. Well, it's very real. And I think that, you know, we're all super excited and that's great, but these are very high stakes. This is really dangerous stuff. These are two humans aboard a rocket that is got a lot of fuel on it. Um, and also this is an un proven crew vehicle. The Falcon 9 has obviously sent cargo to the International Space Station, but this is a this is a test flight. This is the first time humans are on this vehicle, on this capsule. So it is incredibly risky. It is incredibly dangerous. And um, I'm sure that they're probably uh, trying not to think about those things, you know, because oh, why sure. would you even want those thoughts in your in your mind? No, you can't have that negativity. No, you, you can't even think that way. So um, we're just very happy that Bob and Doug are the guys that are doing it. They are, just seem like the two coolest kind of fun cucumbers. It didn't, it didn't make any sense. Hey guys, Susie, is, uh, Susie is coming back in. You know, cool as a cucumber is what I meant. Like, you're cool as a cucumber, whatever. Okay, so here's Susie's trying to come in. Trying. We're getting all kinds of comments though all over the world here. Hi from Spain. Hey. Hi. Susie's here. Hi Susie, can you hear us? Oh, her camera keeps going in and out. No. All right. All right, so Susie, it's just not going to happen. But nope. it does look like Susie's in a packed area. I yeah, mean, there I was a hear. lot of background noise there. Yeah, I could hear a lot of I could hear a lot of people on there for sure. Um, yeah, people are watching from Chile, from Spain. I know there were some from England. We are being viewed internationally. Of course, because this is such a historic mission. Yes, and this is one you don't want to miss. Um, how long until they dock with the ISS? So when they lift off at 4.33 uh, p.m., they will be docking at the ISS tomorrow at 11.29 a.m. So it's approximately 19 hours that they'll be flying on Crew Dragon. Uh, kind of long. I mean, it's also, it could be longer, obviously. Uh, for instance, if they had to push this launch to Saturday or Sunday, they would actually be staying in Crew Dragon for about 30 hours. Uh, so that's almost double. Mm. But um, but yeah, so it'll be 19 hours. And then they dock with the International Space Station. Uh, NASA astronaut Chris Cassidy, who is currently the only American astronaut on board the space station, How will How lonely is that right now? I mean, just he there has, by himself? He's not totally by himself. Oh. He has two um, other astronauts oh, from American. the Russian oh, okay. space station. Oh, okay. Only American yeah. astronauts. No, 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 no. I don't think... They would ever just send one human gotcha. to the space station. Yeah, he's just the only American. Um, and Chris Cassidy, he knows Bob and Doug well. Uh, he has flown with Doug to space before. He also has flown with Doug's wife to space before. So uh, I know they had actually been chatting throughout the week. And Did you um, girls go back outside so we can see the rocket? Oh, that's my mom again. Well, I mean, not really. That's kind of the problem. Um, I don't know if we could try. I mean. Could switch to video. I don't know how we would do that. We, we got to think about that. Yeah. Well, we don't have much time. Mm -hmm. No. Nope. Answer, no. Rob says no. Sorry, Dina. <clears throat> we were outside, and then there was a tornado here. Just so you know, and our tent blew away, and we had to rush downstairs, and we got rained on. So that's what happened. Okay. So he's trying again. So let's try one more time to go to Port Canaveral. Okay. Third time's the charm. Maybe. There she is. I hope. So. I hope so. Can you hear me now? Yes. Hi, Susie. Yay. Okay. 
I'm kind of out of the crowd, so I'm going to take my mask off. Okay. Hi, how is it out there? It's, you know, it looks like I can see blue skies. Um, it's It's been kind of interesting here at Rusty's. They've um, cleared the, the back deck. They've let people go out on the back deck. It started raining. They cleared the back deck again. Um, it's just kind of like a roller coaster ride. How many people are there? Is it busy? It's it's pretty busy. I mean, the back area was was pretty full for a while, and then it started raining. Um, the the restaurant, the indoor dining, has been full. Uh, you know, at half capacity, they can only seat about 150 people. So um, I talked with Rusty earlier today, and of course, they would have rather been able to fill up, um, but. They're pretty happy with the crowds today. I, I can turn around and you can see the people behind me. You want me to do that? Yeah, let's see those people. Is, sure. that, gonna, is that gonna make everybody seasick? I don't think so. See that I, we've got, yeah. Can you try flipping the your camera? camera? No, that doesn't work, Tony. Oh, never mind, never it mind. Doesn't work. <laughs> Are let's they see, doing anything get... fun? Like, do they have like specials or like rocket themed drinks or like are, are they are the businesses there like doing stuff and getting in on the launch action? You know, not really, but there are a lot of people here. There's a um, there's a team from the Washington Post set up here to watch the launch um, from the from the deck at Rusty's. Um, I talked with a family from Gatlinburg, Tennessee earlier. They drove 12 hours to get here. And wow. They're like they're like yeah we drove we drove 12 hours nonstop to get here in time for the launch and. Now it's going to be postponed, and they have to go home on Friday. So if it doesn't go today, they have to miss it. But, well, we're, we're know, looking that's... really good. We're actually looking very good. Fueling has started. Fueling's about to start. Oh, they yeah. were verified go at okay. T minus forty five, but at T minus thirty five, which is happening in a minute, uh, fueling will begin. Yeah, and the crew access arm has retracted, so it's actually looking really good right now. Oh well, that's exciting. Exactly. So. So we may actually see it. We might. That's the whole point. Yeah. <laughs> Have y'all so, had a lot of rain at the, at the Space Center? It's It's we, been yes. kind of crazy here. Yes, it's been crazy here too, Susie. We were rained on. We, there was a tornado warning. We lost our tent. It broke in pieces. It flew away. And now we had to come inside <laughs> the blockhouse. So it was, oh, really, wow. it was really dramatic. Yeah, weather did not want us at the roof of the blockhouse for this launch. Apparently yeah. not. So what about the when you're talking to the business yeah. owners down there, all those restaurants at Cape Canaveral, how are they feeling? Are they are they getting good business? Are they feeling like this is going to be good for them, this launch? Or what's happening? Well, and again, um, Rusty said that it's definitely good. It's, you know, they're having a good day, especially a, a good post-corona shutdown day. Um, Junkanoo, which is the place right next door, had not reopened, but, you know, they closed down in March and um, they reopened today and I can kind of see their back deck from, from Rusty's and it looks like they've got a good crowd there too. But, you know, it is, and people are being pretty respectful. You would, you know, usually there are people jostling for a, a place at the corner or, or, you know, at the edge where you have the best view. And people don't seem to be doing that here today. They're they're being pretty respectful. Of course, it's it's not very crowded out here right now because it's been raining. So, right, that well, may change in thirty like minutes. But right now, it's uh, someone yeah, right on Facebook just asked what time the launch is. Launch is at four thirty three p.m. It needs to launch at that time, or else they are delaying until Saturday. Um, so yeah, we are now t minus thirty five minutes until launch. Sure. Well, Susie, thanks I so much for. Excited. I oh, oh, good. Yeah. Thanks we are so too. much for checking in with us. Well, I'm glad y'all. Glad I was able to finally overcome the technical difficulties. It's it's good to see y'all. I miss you. I miss you too. And you know, have a like a martini or something fun for me, please. Yeah, me too. So you need to have two drinks now. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I, it's not like I can leave anytime soon because of the traffic, so I might as well just, you know, get a glass of wine and hang out for a while. Yeah, yeah you yeah. know what? You should wait for us until like 10 p.m. when we can finally leave. <laughs> <laughs> okay, down, Susie. Thank you. See you later. Bye, Susie. Bye, y'all.
folks, it is 4 p.m. Um, if you are just joining us, this is the USA Today Network and Florida Today live stream show of the SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket sending two NASA astronauts to the International Space Station in 33 minutes. Yeah. That's happening. how close we are. So this is a very historic launch for many, many reasons. This is the first time ever that a private company is sending NASA astronauts to space, to the International Space Station to orbit. This is also the first time we're sending humans from America, from Kennedy Space Center in nine years. It's been a long slog, but we watched a lot of satellite launches over the We did, and yeah, granted, a lot of satellites. they're still cool. A launch is a launch. Satellites are cool, yes. I think they launches are. are really cool. I'm kidding. I don't we really know like sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> but for sure, this one is cooler. I was like, I was telling my roommate yesterday, who was also like playing it off. He was just like, eh, I mean, we've been nudging humans this entire time. And it's I was true. like, a lot of people feel that way. That's true. We have been, we, since 2011, when the space shuttle program retired, which is important to point out, we have still launched humans to space. We have maintained a human presence in space. On the Soyuz spacecraft. Exactly. But it has only been on the Russian Soyuz spacecraft, which launches from Kazakhstan. Uh, so it's a very big deal to bring that now back to the U.S. To see it launch basically from our own backyard. Made in America. That's what we're doing here. That is, it's all made in America. Made in American rocket spacecraft, even the space, space suits are made in America in Hawthorne, California. Where are the Teslas made? Tesla's are made in California. Tesla's Northern are. California. And Alameda, right? And there's a couple other places okay. uh, across the world. He has a whole It's all made in America. Brand. The astronauts are made in America. They are, Bob and Doug. Yep. They sure are. They're from Missouri and New York. Oh, really? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, Bob's from Missouri and Doug's from New York. Oh. They are uh, right now sitting in the Dragon Crew capsule. We know that they woke up this morning at 9 a.m. They had the very traditional uh, astronaut breakfast of steak and eggs. Then they had a whole bunch of medical tests. They went over to the ONC building, which is the famous building where the astronauts get suited up. Um, the NASA administrator came and talked to them. Elon Musk came and talked to them. And then they did that very famous thing where they walked out that door. Um, and then Tony and I actually saw them drive by. We ran out and got some video and they waved to us and they headed to headed to the pad. So we know that the crew access arm is retracted mm -hmm. and um, fueling has... Fueling has begun. They are now fueling the rocket. Uh, if we can actually, um, I'm not sure if Rob has that Falcon 9 video, we can switch to that so people can get some more info on that. On the actual Falcon 9 rocket? Yes. Okay. Well, if he can find it, we can pull that up for sure. But just to give, you know, while he's doing that, to give just kind of an idea on how important this launch is, we're having the president flying down to view this launch. I mean, President Donald Trump, Vice President Mike Pence are here at Kennedy Space Center to view this historic mission. They're gonna be watching from the OSB building, is that correct? I think they are. Yeah. So the, maybe on the roof of the OSB2 building, which OSB. is right next to us, and it is yeah. uh, always where the VIPs are. So pretty sure that that's where they're viewing the launch from. Yep. So uh, truly amazing. Yeah, it's a big deal, for sure. We are now half hour away from launch. As, as, as exciting as the launch is, I gotta tell you, I'm, I'm really excited and scared for the return because they're going to be splashing down in the Atlantic Ocean. Yes. Again, we haven't seen that in yeah, decades. Decades. So, I mean, that is going to be really fun. And they're going to do it here in the Atlantic Ocean. I know. Yeah, because um, Apollo 11, that splashed down in the Pacific that's Ocean. That's right. This is now going to be in the Atlantic Ocean. And like you said, it has been decades since we splashed down. It's only been nine years since we launched astronauts. But it has been decades since astronauts splashed down in the ocean on a capsule. Right, because the know. shuttle used to just land. Exactly. The shuttle used like to an land. Airplane. And we're not even just saying here, like, Ameri on American rockets or capsules, even the Soyuz doesn't splash down in the ocean. It That's splashes right. down on land. Mm -hmm. So it's been a very, very, very long time. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I mean, everything needs to go perfectly. Yeah. That's another thing where weather comes into play too, yep. where they have to make sure that weather is good for splashdown events. And that's the thing also with today's launch. I mean, we're not just looking for good weather conditions for the rocket to actually lift off. We're also making sure that the 
weather is good for if there were to be a possible abort scenario, uh, if there's a malfunction with the rocket or not. So we need to make sure that the weather is good out in the ocean for the capsule to splash down. We need to also make sure the weather is good for the first stage booster of the Falcon 9 rocket to land on the drone ship, which is stationed in the Atlantic Ocean. So, I mean, there's a lot of factors that are coming into play. I think that it's impossible to talk about SpaceX and not talk about Elon Musk. We actually started to talk about Elon Musk and then we got sidetracked talking about other things. Um, this is a man who is a really kind of a former software engineer in some ways. He founded some companies. He really has no space experience. He's not an aerospace guy, but he is the head designer at SpaceX. He's always had this vision to go to Mars. And um, he sees this launch as one of the steps towards Mars. So um, I've had the opportunity to, to interview him. I actually visited his factory in 2014 and was able to spend some time there. I got a tour and interviewed him. And, you know, obviously we've just been following him this entire time. For sure. So um, it's really his, his vision and his whole new way of doing things that he was able to pull this off. Real quick, we have a question. My anxiety is an all-time high right now. I think I'm more nervous than the astronauts. Really? Well, you know what? I think we are too. <laughs> Winston Scott just told us that they're not nervous at all. They're ready to go. They're ready to lift off. Who's cucumbers? Yeah, so Nari, we're also probably more nervous than the astronauts as well. Cool as cucumbers. All right. That's out. what I we'll was start, trying to say. We'll start cool as that. cucumbers. Okay. okay, anyway. So Elon Musk. We've got a we've got a video on Elon Musk that can tell us a little bit more about his his background. Um, Rob, if you have that video, let's roll it. American astronauts are set to return to the International Space Station from American soil. That's an accomplishment not seen since 2011 and leading the way is SpaceX. Founded by Elon Musk in 2002, the company's accomplishments in commercial space flight and rocket reusability speak for themselves. But who is the billionaire entrepreneur who started SpaceX? The 48-year-old was born in South Africa to a model mother and engineer father. Growing up, Musk said he consumed book after book on science fiction, engineering, and other fields. He eventually moved to Canada and then to the U.S. He would find himself working on a graduate degree at Stanford, but dropped out to pursue business ideas. The first was Zip2, which provided city guides to newspapers like the New York Times. That company was later acquired, leaving him with money to co-found X.com in 1999. That later became PayPal, from which he sold his shares for $180 million. Musk's past related to spaceflight really began in the early 2000s. His long-term goal to put humans on the surface of Mars started taking shape, so he wanted to buy leftover Russian missiles, but they were just too expensive. That's when he realized he could start his own company and build the rockets himself. With $100 million from his PayPal sale, he founded Space Exploration Technologies in 2002. Along the way, SpaceX successfully flew its Falcon 1 rocket, then began leasing Launch Complex 40 at Cape Canaveral Air Force Station. Under a NASA contract, SpaceX became the first to send a commercial vehicle to the ISS. But the real coup was when he secured Kennedy Space Center's Pad 39A in 2014, the former Apollo pad that sent astronauts to the moon. And that's where astronauts Bob Behnken and Doug Hurley will take flight on Crew Dragon. SpaceX will fly the mission under a multi-billion dollar contract with NASA. Since its inception, SpaceX has launched Falcon 9 rockets nearly 90 times. It also pioneered rocket reusability by landing more than 50 boosters. SpaceX is now the most active launch provider in the world. After SpaceX, Musk became involved with the car maker Tesla, eventually rising to its board of directors. He retains top roles in both companies. His net worth today is nearly $40 billion. There you go, Elon Musk. Yeah, the one and only. You know, I think that I, you know, he's not someone that you get emotion out of very much when, when you interview him. I mean, I think that it's maybe it's just something that's hard to explain. Um, but I can imagine that this is a pretty big day for him. Oh, for sure. I'm sure he hasn't slept in days. I don't think he slept. I don't think that man has slept in months. Yeah. Um, well, especially with a newborn Twitter baby. Feed. Yeah. I mean, he's got a lot. He's got a lot going on. Um, but I just think that. It's a pretty amazing accomplishment. Again, uh, you know, 
he really went up against the industry in a totally different way. This is somebody who's not, you know, uh, Boeing or Lockheed. Those are amazing companies, and they're also building spacecraft, but they're doing it in a very different way. And Elon Musk and SpaceX are a part of new space, essentially, this Silicon Valley approach of disrupting an industry. So he's, he's, he's done it. Here we are. He's about to send two NASA astronauts to the International Space Station in really just minutes. Um, Emery just said that we're about, what, five minutes away from? We'll find out in three minutes. We're going to find out in three minutes. And if, they scrub or not. Right, right. Yep. So we are three minutes from finding out if we are scrubbing. So hang in there. We're going to know any moment if this launch is a go. I surely hope it is. Um, we are all here. We're ready. We're excited. We want it to happen. And yeah, I really want this to happen. I know. I, I need this to happen. <laughs> you know, so I need you to happen just for us. Absolutely. I mean, look, this is this is our launch. This is a this is America's launch. I mean, um, you know, this is a commercial partnership. But this is very much a partnership with NASA, a government agency, which guess what is funded by your tax dollars. So this is a three and a half billion dollar uh, program, the commercial crew program. For sure. So um, you paid for this. I paid for this. This this is our spacecraft. These are our astronauts. Um, so it's very much a part of us. And I think that is why people feel so excited and inspired, you know? Definitely. Um yeah, I mean, it, and it is inspiring. It's, my brother wants to only ride on a Falcon 9 rocket, Chica. You really? Yeah, well, especially because it's named after the Millennium Falcon, and he's also a Star Wars fan. How old is he? He's, he's 14 oh, now. Oh, so it, but that's doable. Yeah. He, it could very much be something he does one day. Yeah, no, that's his dream. He wants to be an astronaut. Oh. <laughs> No, that's nice. And I mean, these days, I mean, that's the point. In fact, um, Nicole Mann was just saying that the other day in the press conference, mm -hmm. that this really part of this uh, launch in the commercial crew program is that astronauts are going to be opening up to all kinds of people. All For kinds sure. of people are going to be astronauts is what I'm trying to say. Right. Once private, you know, more and more private citizens are going to space, um, you're going to be an astronaut. You're not going to be a NASA astronaut necessarily, mm -hmm. but you're going to be an astronaut. You can right. buy a ticket on the Dragon crew capsule. That's correct. Uh, Nicole Mann is, just for reference, she is another NASA astronaut, and she's actually part of the crew for Boeing's Starliner demonstration mission. So uh, just like, so the commercial crew program uh, is SpaceX and Boeing, and they all have to kind of do the same kind of milestones. Right now, SpaceX is the first one to fly humans to space for their test mission, uh, but Boeing also has to go through that, and they will be sending NASA astronauts Chris Ferguson, it's um, Eric Bo or Mike Fink? I always forget the other one. It's Mike Fink, it used to be Eric Bo and then he got replaced. Uh, and then Nicole Mann, uh, Mike and Chris, they have flown to space before, they are veteran astronauts, but Nicole Mann has never flown to space, so it will also be her first space flight, uh, which is exciting, um, just to give you guys some background. So we are seeing now that is the pad, that is the Falcon 9 rocket there at pad 39A, where uh, we sent the first Americans, the first men to the moon. I mean, that's how historic that launch pad is here at Kennedy Space Center. That's the Dragon Crew capsule above the Falcon 9 rocket. You can see the, the weather is, you know, kind of cloudy. It doesn't look great. Um, we've been dealing with a lot of weather all day. Hey, so... What was the uh, call, Emery? They are not scrubbing? Okay, it's venting though, the rocket's yeah, venting. They are seeing the rocket venting. But we're still then trying to see if they are going to continue proceeding or not. We're going to hear in any moment if this is a scrub today. Um, 4.33 is the launch time. It's an instantaneous window, so that's it. It's either happening at that time or it's not happening, but we're hoping to find out any moment if we are a go for launch. The rocket is yeah, venting we are. there on pad 39A. Look at that amazing tower, that black tower. That is the SpaceX tower that uh, Tony was referring to. It's a total makeover of the former tower that was there. For sure. Yeah. Very sleek, very SpaceX looking. It is. It's That's how totally they do everything. SpaceX. Elon Musk was wearing all black today. Did you see that? Yeah, he had a black uh, mask yeah, on. Yeah, he even had a black mask. 
So it's it very much fits the look. Oh my goodness. Yeah. It's getting close. It's getting close. It's crazy. So what are we gonna do when when it hap well, we're gonna we're gonna go to the live stream, we're gonna go to the uh, feed of the launch at that point, and then we're probably gonna run outside so that we can see it ourselves. Oh, for sure. Yeah. We are definitely running outside. Okay, okay. And then we'll come back inside. Yes. Um and sign off, but we're getting so close, you guys. Oh really? And we're saying that's the latest weather check. Yeah. Yeah. Uh oh. Okay, so Emery is reporting to us that they're saying the weather is going to clear 12 minutes after launch time. So that's not going to work, obviously. We need it to clear at launch time. So at the moment, it's starting to not look good. Oh. Which means we'll be back here yep, the on next, Saturday. The next launch window is Saturday at at 3.22 p.m., which then hopefully, I mean, if it's Saturday, we'll be able to be on top of the roof this time That's and people right. can, can see the, the background. So, you know, there's there's ups and downs. And then if it doesn't go Saturday, it goes Sunday. That's true, at 3 p.m. Sunday. Yep. Uh, Hold on. Hold on. And they have scrubbed. Oh, my goodness. Wow. So that's official? What did it, who, who did it come from, NASA? Much abort. Okay. So it's due to weather? Okay. So that's a scrub, folks. Um, unfortunately, we have a scrub due to weather. Really unfortunate. Um, everybody was hoping that it was going to happen today. Um, President Trump is here. Vice President Pence is here. But that is officially a scrub of the launch today. So that's just so unfortunate. We're all bummed about that, but that means we will be back on Saturday. So the, the launch has been scrubbed. It's due to weather. Um, the weather is set to clear around 12 minutes after the launch time of 4.33. I know. But that's just not good enough. We it's were gotta, so close. It's gotta be clear at launch time. So because this is an instantaneous window, they can't wait. They can't just sit there on the pad and wait for the weather to clear. It just doesn't happen that way. So that is a scrub. And that means that we'll be back Saturday for the launch. That is correct. We'll be back. Hopefully the weather will obviously, hopefully it'll be much better. It's supposed to be, I mean, the weather forecast that was drawn out today was 60% go for Saturday's attempt, which today it was 50% go. So here's hoping for better weather. Here's hoping it also cooperates just with us logistics wise so that we can be at the roof of our block house instead of inside so that we can give you guys that lovely view. And, um, and yeah, we can launch, we can launch this baby. Yeah. So it's, you know, it, they have to be safe. Obviously the weather has to cooperate and that's just the way it goes. Um, we've got to be as safe as possible, as careful as possible. So we just can't launch today for sure. Well, yeah. So I want to thank everybody for tuning in. And, um, again, our next launch opportunity is Saturday at three 22, PM. PM. So, so what time then should they, so everyone come into our page again. Probably around 1.30 is when we'll have our, we'll start our live stream. All right, so we'll see you guys then at 1.30 p.m. Saturday. Thanks so much for tuning in. Uh, obviously, we're all bummed it didn't go off today, but maybe it'll be even better condition Saturday and it'll be the weekend, so you know you guys won't be stuck at work trying to run off to do this launch. It'll be a better opportunity and, uh, and yeah. Okay, everyone, thank you so much. We'll see you on Saturday. Bye. Bye.